أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدًا عبده ورسوله صفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فزه اللهم عنا خير الجزاء وابلغنا مأمنه عباد الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل بيننا شقيا ولا محروما My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam سلام الله عليكم ورحمته وبركاته I would like to begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity, the health, and the wealth, and the tawfiq to be here tonight. I would like to thank the organizers of this organization and the volunteers for the endless hours they have put in to make this conference a reality. And I would like to begin by reminding you of the famous hadith of Prophet Sallallahu in which he says إِنَّمَ الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ إِنَّمَ الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَى فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى الدُّنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةً ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. In this hadith, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم reminds us of the status of intentions, of the status of intentions and what the niya of a believer, what role that niya plays. My brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we'll be here for, for the, th the next three, th three days. And if I may ask every one of you, what brought you here? What are you doing here? What is your intention to be here? I'm sure we can get all sorts of answers. Someone would say, a young man may say, well, my parents were going to the convention and they asked me to come along. A vendor may say, I have some business to do. Last year's convention was great and I'm here to make more money, inshallah. A speaker may say, I was invited to speak. A volunteer may say, I'm inspired by the work that we are doing here and I wanted to help out. No matter what your answers are, my brothers and sisters, 
As I read the hadith of Prophet ﷺ in which he says that إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ bin-niyat. So in order for us to be able to benefit completely and fully from our intentions and from our actions, we must have the right intentions. And I want to invite you all now to reset your intentions. To reset your intentions regardless of whatever brought you here today. Reset your intentions that I am here to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, let's reflect on the simple stuff. It's easier to talk about reforming society. It's easier to talk about changing our communities. It's easier to talk about lofty goals. But sometimes we struggle and it may become a challenge for us to handle the smaller, the little things. The Prophet ﷺ has reminded us that even the little things that we may not be paying attention to, they may end up being the bigger things. And the bigger things and the bigger difficulties and challenges that we are having, if given the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can get over them. So as you are attending this conference today, you may be a speaker. I want to share with you what you can, as a speaker, think about today. You should have the intention that maybe the words that I will share with someone, maybe the examples and the stories that I'll tell, that may become the reason for changing somebody's heart. The Prophet ﷺ, in a famous hadith said, لَن يَهْدِ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلٌ وَاحِدٌ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النِّعَمِ لَن يَهْدِ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلٌ وَاحِدٌ if your words are an inspiration for someone to change their ways and someone receives guidance through my words, that is better than the riches of the earth. The riches of the earth, my brothers and sisters. As a speaker, I can inspire and think about what if my words will change someone's lives. I seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these words. That should be my intention. That should be your intention. You may be a vendor in the bazaar. You've done business in previous years and you're looking to make some more. But if you aspire to think about this as an opportunity for you to make halal rizq, to feed your family and your children from the hard-earned money through halal means. If you are thinking about this, this act of being in the bazaar, selling goods and products, this is not an alien concept. This is part of who we are. This is part of what we live and do every day. People sometimes may think of Islam as something that is alien, something that only happens in the masjid, something that only happens when you're reciting Quran. No, my brothers and sisters, no. Islam is, and this way of life is, something that you do every moment of your, of your life. When you are dealing with that customer, the courtesy that you show to that person, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The honest dealing that you do with that person may earn you Jannatul Firdaus, my brothers and sisters. A woman just, you know, putting her, her cat into a situation where she cannot eat and die because of that would, would enter the hellfire. On the contrary, a man who would bring water to a thirsty, dying dog would attain paradise. 
We hear these examples over and over again, my brothers and sisters. And it should register for us. What we are doing on an everyday basis plays that biggest role. I may be speaking here in the conference once in a month or once uh, every quarter or something like that. But at the end of the day, what I'm doing on a daily basis is what really matters. That is what's developing my character. That's what really describes who I am. So the vendor may seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the words, through his action, through his honesty. You may be attending this conference as an attendee, but you can seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well, my brothers and sisters. You can seek the pleasure of Allah by meeting your brothers and sisters. The Prophet ﷺ reminded us that as you and I interact with each other, what should be the first thing that should be on my mind? As I see you, I greet you. And I am opening up. I am in a mood, in a, in a, in a positive mood. I'm receiving you. I'm hugging you with an open arm, with nothing in my heart, that in itself, my brothers and sisters, is what really allows us to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're meeting with your family and friends, when you are talking to people around this conference, the money that you spent, the time you took off from work or from your family, this is how you as an attendee of this conference can seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, I want to mention something very important. In the next three days, we are all going to have an opportunity to gain lots and lots of knowledge. It should be your intention that you're seeking the pleasure of Allah through the knowledge that you're gaining. The Prophet ﷺ says, إِنَّ الْعَالِمَ لَيَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى الْحِيْتَانُ فِي الْبَحْرِ حَتَّى الْحِيْتَانُ فِي الْبَحْرِ The seeker of the knowledge, everything is seeking forgiveness for him. Even the fish in the ocean. You as the attendee of this conference are seeking knowledge, my brothers and sisters. And that can be your means to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another narration, Allah, the Prophet says, إِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَ لَتَضَعُ أَجْنِحَتَهَا لِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ رِضًا بِمَا يَسْنَعُ The angels are covering those who are seeking knowledge. If you and I make our intentions as an attendee of this conference, I'm here to gain knowledge that will connect me and make me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that could be the difference between us and that will be a protection between us and the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. In another narration, the Prophet sallallahu says, وَمَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ This is a narration of Muslim. My brothers and sisters, we talk about these things. It's a matter of internalizing these concepts. We need to be reflecting and thinking about these, the words of the, the wisdom on the, behind these words. You as a volunteer in this gathering today, you can attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the hours that you have spent. This entire conference was put together by volunteers. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them immensely, to reward them in this life through their children, through their families, and insha'Allah ta'ala in the day of judgment. My brothers and sisters, you as a volunteer, in this conference can also attain the pleasure of Allah. You may be standing behind the registration desk. 
missing out on all the beautiful conversations, the lectures, the stimulating talks. But be assured, if your intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regardless of where your location is in this conference, where are you standing? You may be guarding the door. You may be helping people with their activities. You may be providing security. Whatever your role may be, my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if that act is accepted, and if it was for the right reasons, can be a means for us, can be our salvation, can be something that we would be so proud of when we look back. The quality of our intentions, my brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet says, Inna Allah la yanduru ila ajsamikum, wala ila suwarikum, walakin yanduru ila qulubikum wa amalikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your attire, at your outlook, at your bodies, how do you look? He is interested in what's in your heart. If this heart is in the right state, in the right, with the right mindset, it can change everything for you. And I wanted to save the last part of the hadith of Prophet ﷺ. Till this point, he says, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بِيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَ Famous hadith. Almost every one of us have heard about this hadith. People who gather in the house of Allah for the purpose of remembering Allah, Allah will remember them in a gathering that is much grander than this. Your name will be mentioned by the creator of this universe. وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَ Your name will be mentioned in that company. And here's the best part, my brothers and sisters. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a dialogue that goes on. It's a rhetorical conversation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask his angels, what are my people, what are my slaves asking for? Why they have gathered? And he knows the answers. And at the end of that conversation, Allah will say to his angels, be a witness. I have forgiven them all. I have forgiven them all. So an angel will come and say, Ya Allah, there was this man who was passing by and he just sat with them. His, his intention wasn't to be there. And this is the beauty of the mercy of Allah and the beauty of this religion. We all know for an, any action to be accepted, it requires two things. It requires the intention and it requires the correct action. This is, in my opinion, one of the unique circumstances whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though this person, so Allah would respond to the angel and say, I would forgive him as well. Subhanallah. I would forgive him as well. He was in the company of the righteous. He was in the right company. So this is probably one of the few exceptions. One of the few exceptions where even the intention may not have been necessary. By being in the right company, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive, forgive your sins. The verses of Surah Al-Kahf, beautiful verses, my brothers and sisters, pay attention to them. And I'm bringing this up that the effort that you and I are making, the effort, the money, the struggles that you go through trying to bring your children and your families 
in this company, in this environment. Insha'Allah, and I ask you to reset your intentions today and now to seek the pleasure of Allah through that. That company has been mentioned in the book of Allah when he says, Wasbir nafsaka ma'al ladheena yad'oona rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashi yuriduna wajha wa la ta'adu aynaka anhum turidu zeenat al hayati al dunya wa la tuti' man aghfalna qalbahu an dhikrina wa attaba'a hawahu wa kana amruhu furta Very famous every one of us Inshallah we are reading Surah Al-Kahf every Friday Every one of us goes through this ayah Recognize the wisdom the wisdom that Allah is bestowing upon His creation. The wisdom that He is reminding you of the importance of the company, of the good company. As I described to you, in this instance, if you are here, even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't your intention, but you are in the company of the good people, Allah will forgive you. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ Push yourself hard. It takes effort. It takes real effort on your part sometimes because of so many reasons that I want to be in the right company. Maybe the people that you're wanting to hang out with, maybe this person is not as cool. Maybe he's not as intellectual. But if you believe, if you feel strongly in your heart that this person is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the right reasons, then force yourself, my brothers and sisters. Seek those opportunities, seek those people, seek those positions where you can be in the company of the righteous people. My brothers and sisters, now that you're here, now that you are able to Reset your expectations. I think it's incumbent upon you and I, every one of us, to take full advantage of this conference. Over the next three days, tell yourself that I'm here, I've spent the time and my resources, that I'm going to do whatever it takes to gain knowledge, attend the lectures, be able to take notes. I mean, even if you had to, I think uh, this year ICNA, wonderful uh, folios that, that was given with every registration. Take notes. Remember the wisdom that will be really spread over the next three days here. This is a very unique opportunity to listen to so many wonderful scholars, intellectuals, community leaders, Take advantage of that opportunity, my brothers and sisters. Really pay attention. Listen. Reflect. Think about what is being said. If you haven't downloaded the app of the convention, please do so. It will help you to make sure you're able to be on time for these sessions. Please take a moment and make sure that you meet with your brothers and sisters around you. And I will request that the, at the end of this khutbah, the feeling of brotherhood, the feeling of sisterhood that we strive for, is, is, this is what we can get here today. At the end of the khutbah and at the end of the prayers, I, I really urge you to turn around to the person who's on your right, shake their hand, ask their name, introduce yourself. Take an advantage during this conference to assist others. If you find somebody that someone is in need, assist them. You know, stretch your hand. If you're buying food and you find somebody on the same table, invite them to the food. This is the way of Prophet Wasallam. This is the way we really become one. And the need to become one couldn't be more important today than ever before, my brothers and sisters. The need to unite the need to be a one body. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيْكُكُمْ Do not be divided. So when we do these acts, my brothers and sisters, that increases our love. That removes 
that removes bad feelings from our hearts. If you have anyone that you have worked with, that you know of, and you have ever felt bad about them, say to yourself, now, say to yourself, I have forgiven them. An act that we are reminded of by the Prophet ﷺ to do every single night. My brothers and sisters, I don't want to compare this to Hajj by any means. But don't take me wrong at all. But when we go for Hajj, what do we do? What are some of the ibadat that we do? Very minimum. You pray the five daily prayers. There is no, nothing special. It is about the social aspect. It is about your patience. It is about your character. That's what we seek the pleasure of Allah through. By having our best character, by having our best, best behavior, by having that love for our brothers and sisters, this is what the Prophet ﷺ was sent for. إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ he wasn't sent for something lavish. No. إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I was sent to mankind. For what purpose? So I can complete, I can perfect the character of people. That is the test in front of you. You will be tested in this conference, just like you will be tested in any other gathering. There will be moments where you would might feel very angry, very frustrated. If you are a volunteer at a registration desk or if you are guarding the room, trying to ensure security, you may be confronted with some brothers or sisters who may be upset for whatever reason. And maybe rightly so, but it will be a test of your character. Are you here to satisfy your ego? Are you here to accomplish that the fact that I said it it should be this way. No. No. You and I have this challenge, my brothers and sisters. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to really, to allow us to perfect our character. Allow us to be one of those when people look at him or her and say, that is a Muslim. That is the behavior I expected from a brother or a sister. That's who we need to be, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> So in conclusion, I would say, I really want to thank you for attending. <clears throat> please make sure your intentions here is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take advantage of every moment that you hear. And I would also say, <clears throat> remember to greet your brothers and sisters, brothers to brothers and sisters to sisters. At the end of the salah, wa qulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah al azim li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu fa ya fawz al mustaghfirin. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran, tayyiban, mubaraka, wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Allahumma laka alhamdu hatta tarda, wa laka alhamdu ida razit, wa laka alhamdu baad al rida. My brothers and sisters. <coughs> This is the time the Muslims have to be at their best. This is the time your brotherly and sisterly emotions should really show. This is the time that we reap the benefits of our presence in this gathering. This is the time to show what a Muslim is. Allahumma Izz al-Islam wal Muslimin. Allahumma Izz al-Islam wal Muslimin. اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم من أراد الإسلام وأراد المسلمين بسوء فاجعل كيده في نحره واجعل تدبيره تدميره يا سميع الدعاء اللهم عليك بالمفسدين في الأرض فإنهم لا يعجزونك اللهم أكشف أمرهم وأهلك سرهم وانشر خيرهم وجعلهم عبرة للمعتبرين يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا ولسانا ذاكرا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع 
ومن عين لا تدمع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالع... أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته وقدسه حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحابه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة